Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Let me tell you something. You know you're good. You know you're fun to listen to when your show starts out with a qualifier. The station management or the station or its advertisers endorse what this guy's about ready to say. We don't claim him. (laughs) We don't want nothing to do with him. Ladies and gentlemen of the American Jerry. And to all my Buckeye and Cardinal friends and fans, I say valiant effort. And to Wildcat Nation, Bulldog Nation, salutes you. Job well done. Thank goodness Davis played a great game. He saved your butts. Terrence Jones, please rebound tonight a little bit faster than the last couple minutes of the game. I will give full analysis of tonight's game. To Kansas fans... Prepare to join the ranks of the vanquished. That's the bottom line. And I love that word. It ought to be the word of the day every day. Vanquished. A good word, TC. It applies to Dave. I don't know about every day. And we will also cover the events of the world, the nation, the state, the city, that uh, with clear and concise superbity that you expect from the godfather bulldog mafia, the supreme commander of bulldog nation, the oracle of talk radio, and the legal eagle, which is yours truly. TC, I've been working on my humility. I can tell. You know, I've been taking classes, counseling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's my fans that have led me to this. I love it's all that, that hat. praise. It's all, you like that hat? I do. I love that hat. Uh, let's have some fun right off the bat, TC, before oh, we get no, into... I don't want to have fun. But before we get into the final four, <laughs> the final two, uh, everything that's going on in the world, I've got some show and tells for the video cast. First of all, do you see this lovely, pretty flower, TC? Uh, kind of, yes. That, that is it. called a blue-eyed Mary. Really? My wife, his name is Mary, she's a Mary Ann, she's Mary Ann, has, has blue eyes. And this is a flower that she found on her hike with her son yesterday, and it is called a blue-eyed Mary. My wife has a flower named after her, TC. It's amazing. Uh, Also for show and tell, this is funny. This is going to be good. Look at this lunchbox, TC. I am holding up a lunchbox with the name Bulldog on it. This is a gift from my, I don't know if it's from my daughter or from my wife, But uh, I complain all the time that I spend way too much money at lunch every single day and also on snacks, so forth and so on. So yesterday I went to the grocery store and spent $260, (laughs) and I am ready to pack my lunch and snacks every day. You're going to get all that in there? $260 worth of groceries in that? (laughs) No, but just just one day's worth. Oh. And look at this, TC. A banana. You brought a... I brought a banana. I am impressed. Now, are you, are you, are you going to peel it and eat it? Yes, this is going to be eaten during a break of the show. I'm impressed. Now, I, was gonna, I could have saved this for pop culture, but since we want to have some fun right off the bat. Oh, all I'm right. I'm saying now, this is a magazine called Life and Style Weekly. Now, I picked this up, of course, at the grocery at Kroger's yesterday. Standing in line. At the checkout counter. Groceries. And ladies and gentlemen of the American Jerry, I... I'm going to shock you. I, I I am amazed, TC. This is filled. Look at Faith Hill. Look look at Faith Hill down. This shows, this magazine shows stars and celebrities, female celebrities, uh-huh. without makeup and then with makeup. And ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, it will change your opinion of who's hot and who's not. <laughs> Faith Hill is downright scary looking. Without her makeup on. Really? Look at her. I mean, look at that. Now, where they Zoom into that, pictures, Jacob. Right? I mean, if they just come out of the gym, you know, of course you're going to It look. doesn't make any difference. My wife is beautiful with oh, or without makeup. Oh, man. You but know. I'm telling you, okay, I mean, here are the stars that are okay without makeup. Angeline Jolie. Not bad without her makeup. Haley Berry. Oh, my God. <laughs> are you kidding Halle me? Berry? We all love Halle Berry. I'm telling you. Uh, something to be desired. Uh, here's uh, Jessica Alba. Okay, without makeup. Um, Cameron Diaz. Yo, yo. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow. Okay, without makeup. 
Yeah. Kate Hudson, scary. Really? Oh, good golly, scary. Here's one. Here's one that's uh, pretty. Ava Longoria, she's all right uh, without makeup. Uh, Heidi Klum, she's okay without makeup. Some of these you can't even recognize. I mean, you can't even recognize them. Madonna, whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brooklyn Decker with makeup. Oh my god! I-, I tell you, the biggest shocker was Faith Hill. Uh, really? Let me see here. Myla Kunis, okay. Faith Hill is without a doubt the scariest. Wow. I mean, like before Jennifer Lawrence, the big star on um, uh, Hunger Games. Scary. Oh, Jennifer. Uh, oh, excuse me, Julia Roberts. Look out. Not such a pretty woman. I mean, look at this picture. Of Ju- <laughs> Jacob, let's get Julia Roberts in here. Now, now, ladies, I am sympathetic. But come on. We got now, – now, I'm making a point here, TC. Yeah. We guys, yeah. we don't wear makeup. No. We look the same when we wake up in the morning, when we go to bed at night. If you take us out after the workout, we look the same. That's right. Ruggedly handsome. Ruggedly handsome. I mean, lay, oh my God, it changes my opinion of these ladies. <laughs> the things that you can get at the checkout counter. I'm going to go to the grocery more often, TC. You know, a, f- a friend of mine lives down in, uh, I think it's, it's uh, in Memphis? Yes. In Nashville, Nashville. Uh, Faith Hill and Tim McGraw um, had a child that was actually went to the same, uh, uh, was in the same kindergarten class as their daughter. And he said they had some sort of you know Christmas play or whatever going on there. And everybody's got their video cameras, and he's videotaping. And he says, you see that head right there? See that lady's head right there sitting in front of me? That's Faith Hill's head. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a video at the back of Faith Hill's head. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, we got a great feel-good song for the U.K. Wildcats that we're going to play at the right time. Uh, probably coming up. We'll do sports when we come back. I got a great joke. Uh, a young blonde was on vacation in the depths of Louisiana. She wanted a pair of genuine... By the way, she didn't have makeup on. She wanted a pair of genuine alligator shoes in the worst way, but was very reluctant to pay the high prices the local vendors were asking. After becoming very frustrated with the no-haggle attitude of one of the shopkeepers, the blonde shouted, Maybe I'll just go out and catch my own alligator so I can get a pair of shoes at a reasonable price. The shopkeeper said, by all means, be my guest. Maybe you'll luck out and catch yourself a big one. Determined, the blonde turned and headed for the swamps, set on catching herself an alligator. Later in the day, the shopkeeper was driving home when he spotted the young woman standing waist deep in the water, shotgun in hand. Just then, he sees a huge nine-foot alligator swimming, swimming quickly toward her. She takes aim, kills the gator, and with a great deal of effort, hauls it onto the swamp bank. Lying nearby were about a dozen other dead alligators. The shopkeeper couldn't believe his eyes. Just then, the blonde flipped over the alligator on its back that she just killed and frustrated shouted out, Dang it! This one isn't wearing any shoes either. (laughs) I made you laugh, TZ. Yeah, you did. I think the American jury is, too. <laughs> That's a good one. That was good. Sorry to pick on the blondes. Uh, sad to, going from humor to sadness, uh, military deaths, we are sad to report. Specialist David W. Taylor, 20, of Dixon, Kentucky, uh, died March 29th in Kandahar Province, Afghanistan. He was assigned to the 2nd Battalion, 508th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 4th Brigade Combat Team, 82nd Airborne Division, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and also corporate Corporal Roberto Cazares, 24 Harbor City, California, who also died on March 30th. He was assigned to the 1st Light Armored Recon- Reconnaissance Battalion, 1st Marine Division, 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, Camp Pendleton, California. God bless them. God bless the Marine Corps. God bless the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, the Guard, the soldiers, their families, their communities. Uh, God love them. On birthdays today. We have a great trifecta of birthdays. God bless his soul. We got Marvin Gaye, baby. What's going on? He ruled the roost in his day. Marvin Gaye. And we have, wouldn't be prudent, wouldn't be prudent. Dana Carvey is 57 today. Wow. Wouldn't be prudent. (laughs) And Rodney King. Really? The famous Rodney King, 47. 
working. You all just and he was along. a young man when he got the hell beat out of him. <laughs> I guess so. You know, got the rest of your life to think about that one. Jeez, huh? old P. Good old Rodney <laughs> King, man. He's had some tr- some troubles and woes, but you know how many people get the hell beat out of you like that for a traffic violation? No, oh, more than you, more than uh, you more than more video. than we like to know. <laughs> That was a bad. Remember, Bill O'Reilly comes up at 728 as talking points and 828, the Huckabee report. So we have lots going on. We come back. Let's discuss the big game tonight, shall we? The Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Michael Savage comes up at noon today, noon to three on Real Talk 1160. And now back. To the Bulldog. Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jerry, what did I say about the Louisville, Kentucky game? I'll tell you what I told you about the Louisville-Kentucky game. I commented and I analyzed that UK has an offense and Louisville doesn't. And that Louisville might play defense, but so does Kentucky. So what happened on Saturday night? Louisville proved that they did not have an offense. Heck, they even missed a couple dunks. And Kentucky proved that they can play defense just like Louisville can. Is this our official sports segment? Yes, it is. It's our official sports... And, of course, we got our official music, which is really original music. TC uh, put this theme song for our sports section together on a Saturday afternoon. TC, great great job putting that together. We maybe ought to discuss, you know, maybe selling that to uh, ABC Sports or CBS Sports or something. Maybe they might. Yeah. Uh, Who knows? But uh, I want to tell you right now that Kentucky did exactly what I said. And I'll tell you what, they played bad. Like Charles Barkley said, they played bad. Teague and Davis were the only ones that played a good game, and they won. And, of course, what else did I say? If the referees, you know, put their little nose in. They called three charging fouls, one on Davis and two on Gilchrist, and the first five minutes of game that were a joke by the same referee was an outrage. And then, of course, ladies and gentlemen of Buckeye Nation, you ought to be appalled at your coach. Losing that lead, the way he handled it at the end of the game. I mean, nobody fouls the guy with three seconds left. They don't foul the guy immediately when the ball's inbound. I mean, that was incredible, folks. I mean, blew it. And let me tell you something else. I don't think that your guard was over the line when he did his little hit the rim. I mean, I thought it was a great play by the guy. And they caught him over the line. I think that was a lousy call. But anyway, let's talk about tonight. Uh, I actually, as a U.K. fan, thought Ohio State would be a better matchup for U.K. just simply because I don't think Ohio State can match the athleticism of Kentucky. However, having said that, Kentucky, the second or third game of the year, beat Kansas by over 10 points. Now, both teams are different, but guess what? Louisville they beat earlier in the year by seven. This time they beat them by eight. And I think this is a 10-point game unless the refs interfere. In other words, if the refs uh, want to set uh, Davis down quick or Gilchrist down quick, you know, it could be a closer game. But if the refs let them play, UK by 10. Um, Just too many athletes. You know, Patino said that you needed three NBA stars to win an NCAA championship generally. UK has six. All right. (laughs) Give some back. Six. (laughs) I mean, isn't that incredible? And here's the way I look at it. The tall center of uh and stating the obvious the tall seven foot white center of kansas uh davis is going to school him with his quickness there's going to be no no comparison davis and him uh, and it, look at usa today they break down the entire front court back court and everything else kentucky has the edge everywhere on the star player for kansas thomas all you do is you put jones on him and tell jones jones Rebound and play Thomas defense. That's all we need you to do this game. Gilchrist will outplay the guy that he's against. And, of course, Lamb and Teague will do the same as their guard play. I mean, mean, Kentucky, I just think, is more athletic than Kansas, although Kansas is more athletic than Ohio State. That Relaford guy scares me. He's pretty good. But uh, Kentucky win by 10, barring injury or barring the referees, putting Gilchrist or Davis on the bench quick. Now I have a question. Yes. The hypothetical situation. Let's just say, for example, that let's just say the game does not go the way we would like it. Tomorrow, what kind of a mood are you going to be in? I won't be in. 
If Kentucky oh loses, I will not be here tomorrow. Uh, you can DC. You can do the show by yourself wow. because I will be in bed with the covers over my head, uh, and I will go steal some prescription depression magazine from my closest and nearest friend that I can find that has some. <laughs> go UK. God, they don't even <laughs> think about the alternative of them losing. We shall not speak of this again. Here's the way I look at it: if they lose, here's the, now I'm a lawyer. You know, I'm. Tr- and I'm still a licensed lawyer in Ohio and Florida. 23, 20, let me see, 22 more days in and Kentucky. Jumping. By the way, do you know how difficult it is, TC, for me? That today is the arraignment of Sarah Jones and Cheryl Jones, my friends, the Ben Gow cheerleader and her mom principal, yeah. over in Kenton County, and I cannot go. Well, you know, you can you can view it from a distance. Like, uh, oh. Do you, yeah, Mr. Type A control personality, me, having to watch my law partner, here, here Charlie, you know, Charlie has to handle the whole god dang thing because I can't do it. Well, you know. But that's, but that's painful, especially national news coverage. Right. The wow. Today Show is going to be there. Killing you, isn't it? I mean, by the way, the media on this story cracks me up. They crack me up. But anyway, you know how painful that is not to be able to be there for me? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, you know, that's, that's why it's called a punishment, you know? It's a punishment. 22 more days. But think about it. Bill's and the bulldog character. will be unleashed. You'll come out stronger mentally, emotionally. Thank you. you you'll have, it builds character, you La- know? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, full disclosure, TC is my new life coach. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a racket that is. And what a job. <laughs> that is a racket. I know, oh, life I know some people that are life coaches like, are you kidding me? And you know what's so funny is what a life coach tells you is what you already know yeah, right, what right, to right, do. Right, right. But you got somebody telling you. How much per hour or <laughs> half hour? TC, we can do it. We could. The we Green could. Water Life Coach Consultants. Oh, Green Water. We got, I forgot all about you, Green Water. You have Green Water? And I was thinking about something. I have nothing prepared at the moment. I was, I'll dig something up. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, the tip-off is like 926. Isn't that special that it starts at 926? Jeez, Like a Pete. Super Bowl or something. By the way, if as a lawyer, I, I, I was going to say this, if UK loses, here's my spin. A- they made it to the finals, so right. Calipari made it to the final eight, the final four, now the final two, so next year we'll win it. Yeah. We're getting closer. That's right. my spin. Uh, in the women's final, the Irish versus the Baylor, and I don't know if you've heard the Baylor star seven-foot player speak. I swear to goodness, if she's not a man, I'm not the bulldog. <laughs> I mean, have you heard her voice? Oh, no, no, no. I think her name's Brittany. <laughs> Hi, my name's Brittany. Holy now, now, cow. We went through that with one of those uh, Olympic runners a few years ago, remember? Let's fly, let's fly through sports in the next minute. White Sox beat the Reds 13-10. to The Celtics beat the Heat 91-72. Wow, a spanking. Thunder beat the Bulls 92-78. Lakers beat the Warriors 121-12. NASCAR, Newman won Martinsville. Volquez, how crazy is this, is going to be the starter uh, opening day for the San Diego Padres. Uh, we trade him. The Saints are going to have an appeal of their ruling. Hunter Mann won the Houston Open by a stroke next week. The Masters. What a week. NCAA Final Four. Opening day on Thursday. Masters this weekend. The Reds Man. traded Juan Francisco to the Atlanta Braves for right-handed pitcher J.J. Hoover. John Calipari. Great article by Paul Doherty. He's unapologetic for one and done. I love it. Uh, Anthony Davis won the Naismith and Wooden Awards for Player of the Year. Uh, tonight he can win a championship and turn him an MVP. He's like winning every single award. I thought Davis should have won the Coach of the Year award too. Bill Self from yeah. Kansas won that. I thought they should have given that to Davis as well. Yeah. <laughs> we come back. Local and state news on Real Talk 1160. Give me some water. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog, giving you radio superbity all morning long, all the way up to 9 a.m., and then I pass the torch to Laura Ingram. I was worried about this guy in light of the Buckeye Buckeye meltdown <laughs> and losing a 13-point lead. I always say I always say that if a team loses a big lead, it probably is the coach's fault. Buckeye Mike, would you give me an analysis of your Buckeye defeat, including what do you think of Thad Mata's coaching that game? Well, first and foremost, Bulldog, it's a great day to be a Buckeye, but a sad day to be a Buckeye basketball fan. 
And I have to humbly come before the court of Bulldog Nation and throw myself there to be exalted. One the American jury will take pity on you. Oh, I appreciate it because as I was getting ready to celebrate a nice Jaybird under glass with a nice cool glass of vintage green uh, water, we wound up eating crow and warm green water. And the difference between the warm green water and the cold green water is the warm green water is a lot chewier. That's a good point. It, it is. It, sta- we, it, starts, you know, it starts to uh, solidify. Yes, it does. And you can make, <laughs> yeah, I think you know, what, what defines that whole season of a great basketball season came down to a couple of minutes that was absolutely a blowout. Um, you know, I was talk- on the Internet all night with that, and I told people, you got to be watching out. This is the same thing that's going to happen at, as it happened at U- with UC. UC just ran out of gas on us. But the last 15 seconds of that basketball game was – just nerve-wracking, and I think the shot that uh, Aaron Kraft made was a, a good shot. I think he didn't. I didn't think he left early. He didn't leave early. I couldn't believe they yeah. claim he left early. And then when he turned around, but they quit. You know, it's like being in the boxing ring. You don't turn your back on a guy before the bell rings. That you know, was that, that. That made him look foolish. It, it did. They stood there for what two, two seconds, three seconds, and just stood there like, "What are we doing?" <laughs> and, they inb- and the worst part. Kansas inb- inbounds the ball and just stands there. They don't even throw it. Crunch is sitting there holding there his hands us. like this going, what, what, what? <laughs> it, it was pretty bad. It said that that's the way it went. But I got an idea. I think I think the uh, Buckeye Nation decided to just go ahead and let basketball in so we can get on to more important things like football. Well, you've got the coach. You've got the thoroughbreds. Uh, it's going to be a great football season for Buckeyes. And the best part about it is we'll get a whole year to practice up for the 2013 bowl season. Sollinger <laughs> probably should have left last year, though. Yeah, I think so, too. I think he could have been went number down. one. Now he's not, it's like he's not going to be number one now. No, he's, he's going to probably come back and be smart because you got all these guys from U.K., North Carolina. So many other schools coming out. He's just going to go down on the, you know, he had to, we had to win the championship for his stock to really go up. Buckeye Mike, what is your prediction of tonight's game? 75-66 UK. And I have to use your airwaves because I put myself out there to do this. Go Cats. Thank you, thank you, Mike. I like that. Even Rick Bettino, yeah. who gets Oracle status today, Rick Bettino said he told Calipari to bring the trophy back to Kentucky. All right. Well, that, okay. I How do like you like that? that? Calipari telling or excuse me, Patino telling Calipari, bring it back. So if Patino can root for the Cats, so can Buckeye Mike. That makes him a good sport. Good sport. Uh, In local news, real quick, Channel 5 won the most accurate forecast. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, they were all telling us we were going to have a sunny weekend. Did you have a sunny weekend? Hell no, neither did I. Uh, Let me see. Ohio foreclosures from the Cincinnati Court Index. This is news nobody has, but you can get it here. Uh, The Hamilton County... Uh, sheriff's office they're processing about 120 foreclosures per week really that's incredible sad no wait a minute i thought we had some sort of programs to slow that that whole process down yeah it's really slowing down not at all and rimke's has pulled pink slime too pink slime's got a bad name man little pink slime never hurt anybody there's no pink slime in green water and I, th- you've already covered this, but this is crazy. That five people being shot. I know. What's going on? What's going on in our city? Come on, Police Chief Craig. Solve these problems, Mayor Mallory. Instead of wearing a hoodie, why don't you... You know, do you ever feel like Mayor Mallory is just like never digs in to solve a problem? I mean, he's all <laughs> fluff and buff, isn't he? Yeah, pretty much. He is the best ribbon cutter and the worst opening day baseball thrower outer in the history of the city of Cincinnati. Are you ready for some pop culture? Oh, I am so ready. Let's have some fun. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I went with my wife Friday night to see Hunger Games. I'm not familiar with the books. I'm not familiar with it. I decided as a talk show host, I needed to know what the buzz was all about, especially when the week before it was sold out at 6 o'clock every showing. Well, guess what? I think it sold out by the time the movie started at 6.30 at the, uh, or 7.30 at the Rave in Florence on Friday night. And I'm going to tell you, folks, it's not a bad movie. In fact, it was a pretty good movie. Some of the stuff's kind of disturbing. It ought to scare the hell. Hey, all you young people, don't vote for Obama because that's the way, that's what we're headed to under an Obama administration. <laughs> Out there, it was some funky dresses and 
The way the people dressed in that city, it was weird, man. Are you familiar with the story? No, not at all. It, the movie's worth going to. Maybe you take your daughter. Okay. Hunger Games. I'll do that. Uh, Game of Thrones, HBO was back last night. Great series. Uh, Sarah Palin is going to co host NBC Today Show on Tuesday. By the way, the NBC Today Show won't leave us alone. They are broadcasting from the Kenton County Courthouse this morning, focusing really? on Sarah and Cheryl Jones. Yeah. And of course, I'm, you know, I'm not talking to any of the media. I mean, I'm suspended, but. They will not let it go. The Today Show is eight up. Really? Eight up uh, with this story. But uh, this is interesting because Katie Couric is going to be in for Good Morning America. Right. So we got the Sarah Palin, Katie Couric throwdown Tuesday. You got the perky Katie Couric or the perky Sarah Palin? The uh, There were some more, oh, shocking, some more country music awards last night. <laughs> How many country award music shows? There is one every other weekend. The country music folks just love to give out awards, TC. How many is there? I don't know. It's the Academy. It's the Nashville. It's the People's Choice. It's the blah, 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 blah. You know, if we and Taylor just, Swift wins every award. Yeah, if we write just one song for Taylor Swift. We, we might win an award. Yeah, you're right. Got a lot I'll, of chances. And every time she breaks up with a guy, do not date Taylor Swift. If you do, you're going to get spanked <laughs> in a breakup song. That White Horse song is a spank. And that Jonas brother, baby, he got spanked. And how about Kiss? They have Kiss. It was April yeah. Fool's yesterday. By the way, did you do any April Fool's Day jokes? I, nothing. None I did. whatsoever. I did. Did you? I posted that in addition to these duties, I was going to also be backing up you-know-who. Yeah. Uh, that it was all worked out, that it was all yeah. okay, and it was funny. People bought it. Chuck bought it. Brad really? Amster bought it. I had my own people buy the April Fool's wow. joke. And you then know, I had to say April Fool's before it got out of hand. Yeah, the only reason I could think that Kiss would be on the Country Music Awards as presenters would be an April, an April Fool's, Fool's joke. I mean, what, uh, there's no, well, yeah, they know. do not have a country. Wait a minute. Maybe Beth. Beth? Maybe Beth yeah. is a country music song. Yeah, that song with string. They got a fiddle. No, that's a that's a violin. Uh, Keith Oberman said he's gonna sue. Uh oh. He's suing Current Al Gore and Joe Hyatt. They're not their his friends anymore, baby. Uh oh. God, you know Al Gore. You know what? He's glad he's not a politician anymore. He's he's rich. Yeah, he is. Uh, uh, he's stinking rich. Ashton Kutcher is going to play Steve. Jo- this guy, let me see, he makes seven hundred thousand uh, dollars. He's going to play Steve Jobs in an upcoming movie. And seven hundred thousand dollars an episode for two and a half men. And Rihanna is now showing up at his house, knocking on the door. <laughs> to Love be Ashton Kutcher, I tell you, so tough, such a tough life. I know. Dodging women, counting your money. Hey, you know what? I wouldn't trade my life for him for anything because he doesn't nah. have a blue-eyed Mary. That's right. He doesn't have a blue-eyed Mary. And Rihanna's already been a skank. <laughs> Leftovers. Wow, it's kind of harsh. That was harsh, wasn't it? In legal news, this is kind of like pop culture news, too. Our good friend Ray Charles, Sensible Don's buddy, is suing seven of the, the foundation, is suing seven of the late singer's children. By the way, he's got 12 kids. He created a trust, 500000 for each of them. Nice. Uh, in exchange, hey, you know, you leave things alone, but they're challenging. I tell you right now. The foundation? Yeah, you know what, TC? I am one of 11 children. Yeah. My mom and dad are in good health at their 82 years old. Uh-huh. My dad is a control freak, and he also believes he's going to live to be 120. And maybe he will. Yeah. But I fear the day <laughs> when we go through this crap. Because it'll happen. I got a couple. I got a sister. Holy cow. Uh-oh. She'll be over there, like, hauling everything out in a tractor trailer. <laughs> Before anybody can get to say boo. I'm telling you, these things happen. You got to take control while you're still alive. Yeah. Lay it out there. Does he have a will? Have everything laid out? My dad's a lawyer, and I bet you he doesn't have a will. Ah, Because, again, he's going to live to be 120. Well, don't wait till he's 100 to make that will. This day in history, Charles Lindbergh turned over the 50K for ransom in 1932. 1969, the Milwaukee Bucks signed Kareem. 1980, Wayne Gretzky became the first teenager to score 50 goals in one season. In 1986, the NCAA adopted a three-point rule. Oh, really? She's real fine, my 409. In 1992, John Gotti was found guilty in the death of Paul Castellanos. 
if you kill a mobster, is it really murder? I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. We come back, Radio Superbity, in a blue sky song for our Wildcats on Real Talk 1160. Well, UC Bearcat baseball team went down in extra innings to Pittsburgh yesterday. They're back in action against South Florida on the 7th. First pitch is at 1 o'clock. Steve Jarnicky calls the game right here on Real Talk 1160. And now back to the Bulldog. This is Eric Dieters, the Bulldog. 513-579-1160 if you want to weigh in on anything. 513-579-1160. TC, does Cincinnati beat Pittsburgh in anything? I don't think so. I mean, I mean is we that will. the most hate? Pittsburgh and Cleveland. I mean, at least we beat Cleveland and whatever. Pittsburgh, they even beat us in college baseball. Well, I do recall one cold day in November when I was a child, we went to a Bengals game, and the Bengals beat the Steelers. You know, it That's is crazy. weird, but I remember back in the days of the Steel Curtain when Pittsburgh killed everybody, we would beat them every once in yeah. a while. Yeah. That I was, was there because for one of those games. That was because we had Kenny Anderson. Yeah. That's right. We did. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Now, get this. This is interesting. The UK Wildcats is the winningest program in NCAA history. Number two is Kansas. Furthermore, they have all blue colors. Every team that's won since 2003 has had blue colors. Kansas is the home of Will Chamberlain. UK, the home of Dan Issel. And guess what, folks? Adolph Rupp was the winningest coach in, in, in NCAA history forever. Naismith from Kansas created the game. So today is historical. But this song is not for Kansas Blue. This song is for all the Kentucky fans out there. This is for the UK Wildcat Nation. ELO, Mr. Blue Sky. E L O It's going to be beautiful tonight and tomorrow. No car burnings, no couch burnings, just blue sky, cheerfulness. Mr. Blue. Since 1998. Because we had to deal with Gillespie and Tubby Smith. Now we got Cal. The drought is over, TC. You know, I've thought of some other ELO songs yeah. from Feel Good. Do ya? Do ya's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard that Do in a ya? while. I'll say tonight they'll be drinking blue water. Blue water. It's green, green water dyed blue. Yeah, by the way, green water is uh, doing a limited edition blue water uh, for the UK championship tonight. Yeah, there you go. Available to Queen Kick. Watch the players. They'll be drinking it after the game. Blue water. Then after the game, they take that big jug of, of green water and they dump yes. it on the coach. Yeah. Yes. But it'll be blue tonight. It'll be blue. Yeah, blue water. Furnished by green water. <laughs> <laughs> Electric Light Orchestra, folks. Great band. Yeah. Little Mr. Blue Sky for you. Uh, and some other news. Let's not do politics. Let's have some more fun stuff before we get to politics. All right. Uh, new research from Virginia Commonwealth University showed that bringing dogs to work could lower stress and increase employee satisfaction. The really? study was published in the International Journal of Workplace Health Management. That is the International Journal of Workplace Health Management. What do you do? I write for the International Journal of Workplace Health Management. What do you do? I'm the editor of the International Journal of Workplace Health Management. They so say that, TC. That would lower stress. You know what else would lower stress? You know what? That's not true for me because whiskey passes gas all day long. <laughs> it would increase my stress smelling my dog's poo. Less work would incre or decrease my stress. You know what, TC? It is proven. I mean, this is wild. You know, as bad as it is in the economy, you know, we are getting 20% 
or no, two hours a night less sleep. Yeah. The last twenty years. And the increased stress on I mean, what's an eight hour day anymore for people? Right. I mean, people have to work longer for less. I mean, half the people are riding in the wagon, but all of us that are pulling the wagon, I mean, good golly, T C. I mean, I, I'm not going to live too long if I keep working the hours I'm doing. I got to have a life change, baby. Yeah. And how about you? I mean, I mean, how many you jobs know, you work? I mean, you work a lot of jobs. You got 17 jobs, man. Remember that bit they used to do on uh, in Living Color? Yeah. I got 17 jobs. You only got six jobs, man. He's got 17 jobs. <laughs> but anyway, it could all be solved, folks, if you talk your employer into bringing your dog. That's all it takes. Bring in your dogs. Here's a funny but sick, sad story, too. The biggest forum for sex trafficking, T.C., of underage girls in the United States appears to be a website called Backpage.com. Uh, this emporium for girls and women, some underage or forced into prostitution, comes from a private company called Village Voice Media. Guess what? Goldman Sachs, they said they didn't know. I kind of believe them. They, 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 they oops. They own 16% stake, and they are trying desperately to unload that quickly. <laughs> Can you imagine? Another hit for Goldman Sachs. Sell, sell, sell. Oh, my God. Goldman Sachs. Now, wait a minute. So they say they didn't know. They say they didn't know. Now, that's a, the guy just resigned, uh, what, last month from Goldman Sachs? Yes, he and did. He, and, he, and he wrote the... the, the Pretty uh, slant. Well, I don't. I won't say slant, but it was it was pretty uh, explosive. What he yes, said. Yes, you know? he basically said Goldman Sachs treated their customers just like rats. So who knows? You know, I tell you, those corporations they do not have a conscience. Corporations do not have a conscience. Nope. They are the headless, conscious corporations of Wall Street. Just ways to make money. In world news, Saudi Arabia is asking Jordan to let him kind of smuggle some. Uh, arms into Syria. You got to like that. The Saudi Saudis are supporting the Syrian rebels. Assad said, I do not like those jigs from all Saudi Arabia. And in Ireland, you know, you got to love the rebels. I want you always to remember, folks, I'm just telling you it the way it is. The Irish saved civilization with their monks rewriting all the great books and great works of literature as the hordes the Muslim hordes went across Europe destroying everything in their sights. But not only did the Irish save civilization, they also helped found America. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, all the people that fought in the Revolutionary War, they weren't Brits. They were Scot-Irish folks, man. They were the Irish. Civil War, same thing. The Scots-Irish, they fought these wars. They built America. That rebel blood which flows through my veins, too. The reason why I bring this up, Detmired Ireland faces a revolt over its new property tax. <laughs> the government said less than well. half, listen to this, said less than half of the country's 1.6 million households paid the charge by Saturday's deadline to avoid penalties. And about 5,000 marched in protest. In other words, uh, sorry, we're not going to pay that property tax. Now, how come we can't do that in America? No, so America, we're like we're like sheep, you know. Okay, we'll pay it all. So did five thousand get arrested, or what happened? No, they didn't get arrested. Okay, but you gotta love the Irish. Drink, be merry, work hard, lead a revolution. But don't tax us. You know what? The Irish. I love the Irish. Immigration fears on the rise. And the APTC is reporting that the recent terrorist attacks in France, Norway, so forth and so on, that a lot of these Europeans are saying, now, "Hey, maybe we don't like this." And anti-immigration groups are growing. So much for, let everybody come in, man. We'll sing Kumbaya together. Until right. they start blowing up buildings and people. And then everybody says, well, <laughs> uh, maybe not. Uh, got some great economic news. <laughs> not too much. Okay. How bad is it, TC? How bad is it? See, well, we got a break. We come back, we'll tell you how bad it is. All right, yeah. Tease him with that. Tease him with that. This is the Bulldog. 22 more days of my Kentucky law license suspended. It won't be long on that's, Real Talk 1160. That's the good news. Now the rest of the news. The rest of the news. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury and observation. You know, when the curtain is lifted 
And because I have been in the news media in the tri-state on both sides of the camera or the microphone, and I've been involved in radio, and I've done countless television interviews, there's no Wizard of Oz hiding behind the curtain to me. I know the game, and I know what it's all about. And I just want everybody to know that I find it amusing, amusing. This is a general statement. I find it amusing how the media gets so much wrong. I find it amusing that those in the media who are reporting the news, that's what they do, they're reporting the news, lack depth and substance, lack depth and substance in matters of which they are reporting. I mean, I see it countless times. And when you personally know about a subject matter or an event, when you have personal knowledge of something and you see what is reported, how it's reported, what is reported, you shake your head and say, how can they say X, Y, Z? Why could they say A, B, C? It's really incredible, folks. Incredible. Uh, A lot of this has to do with legal things that I'm personally aware of. A lot of it has to deal with legal things that I am generally aware of. I mean, I'll watch cable talk news at night, and they'll do some legal commentary about something relative to law, and I'm like, that's not true, or that's not the way it is, or, well, that's an overstatement, or, you know, that's a you know, a slick shine over of what the reality of is or or a overly simplified statement of something. I find it incredible. And let me tell you something else about the media, okay? It's always about what's in it for them, not what's in it for you. I learned long ago, folks, you don't get to write your own stories, You can talk to somebody in television for a story, and you can talk to them for 15 minutes, and you're going to get a 30-second cut, or if you're lucky, and you don't control the context they use that cut. It's the nature of the beast. One of the beautiful things about talk radio is it's continuous. In other words, we don't edit what I'm saying here. You get everything I have to say. We don't melt it down, and you get a little sound bite. Local news, national television news, is all about packaging and spin to present something which rarely is the reality. I find it incredible. And then the other thing that I find incredible is how national news and local news sources, they act like they're there for you. Let us tell your side of the story. Let us tell your side of the story. It's a bunch of BS. It's a race to get the scoop. It's the ratings and revenue. It's, that's what it's all about. And I know this, of course. I know this, of course. So I watch this stuff all the time, and I listen to this stuff all the time, and I just shake my head, and I think to myself, do you think I'm stupid? And let me tell you something that's really funny. When you know their game... And you play the game to your advantage, which is you pick, you choose, and you use it when it's to your advantage and to your benefit. It irritates the hell out of them when you play them. Oh, boy, do they not like to be played. Wait a minute. Do you have a beef with the media? Did somebody upset you? What happened? No, I don't have a beef with the media. I'm friendly with the media. I have great relationships with the media. I've always been media-friendly with clients, issues, but... But there's a caveat, TC. Okay. The media distorts. The media packages. The media takes... You know what I'm talking about, TC. Yeah. On talk radio, let's say we're going to cover a subject matter. Well, we can talk about it for an hour and give all sides of the story and everything else. Right. Well, you're not going to get that on a packaged news story, which is going to be one minute on your local newscast. Gotcha. And they, and, and they act like that they're really covering it fairly and well-balanced and everything else, and it, it's rarely done. And by the way, 
I don't necessarily fault them. It's the nature of the media to some extent. But I'm just telling you right now, there's a lot of irresponsible reporting about lots of stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I agree with you, especially in television. Okay, you can. We all know that there are certain networks that are going to slant things. Oh yeah. In a very liberal way. Yep. Other networks are going to slant things in a more conservative way. Yep. That's the the nature of the beast. That's what they do. But you know, Linda Ellerby said something very interesting about television news. She says the product that we have to offer is not um, not the newscast itself. The product that we have to offer is an audience, and we deliver that audience to the advertiser. That's their job. Right. But so, that doesn't mean – see, I get that, TC, but guess you know, what? That doesn't mean all of us, the consumer, or those that interact with the media, got to play that game. Yeah, well, we do. Think about it. No, you don't have to play the game because there's certain situations where you can choose. And, and let me give you an example. Let me give you an example, okay? Um, I'm co- what, what I'm about ready to say, I am. I am not saying as a lawyer. I am saying it as – a talk show host in the tri-state, okay? Uh-huh. I heard very publicly mentioned, publicly mentioned on Saturday, someone make a comment about Zeke Pike from Dixie Heights High School who is going to Auburn, um, whether or not he was somebody that was involved in this whole Sarah Jones thing. Okay. This was on on uh, yeah. in the media. How or just... how how absolutely irresponsible and false is that? And and oh, I can't comment. I don't know. I know, but what, no. What I'm trying to say though is, it amazes me. And and here's here's what here's what's here's what's wrong about it. Okay, if you are one of the individuals who is the target of the news story, or you're a part of the news story. It is only fair that you be treated fairly. And what happens is, in the lust for ratings and revenue, there's a lack of responsibility and fairness all the time. Let me get, let me give you an example. Okay. It was reported by the Enquirer that I'm suspended 181 days. I'm not. I'm suspended 61 days, 22 days left. Now, Jim Hanna from the Enquirer has followed this story forever. Yeah. How can the Enquirer get that so wrong and leave a false impression to the public? You see, now that is wrong. That is you know, wrong for them to do. You know, and with all due and respect I have been invo- to the Enquirer, they get, they get the numbers wrong a lot. Okay, and you then— know, You're and, right about that. Okay, and, and then I can, I can think of other examples. Um— in my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, the Dinkle family was done terribly wrong back in the winter on this story of the the the, the mother of the the quote unquote victim who freaking assaults oh, the, the Dinkle family. Yeah, yeah. And the story's presented like Jenny and the family did something wrong, which was not true. By the way, was anything ever charged? No. And what happens is, TC, the allegations hit the front page. And then when the, when everything gets resolved, it's on the second page, the third page, and the fourth page. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that. And the the problem is the situation is a guy like Dinkle or uh, a Bengal cheerleader, they have some celebrity status. Okay, that's the key. That's that's the key right there. Fair enough, but you, know? you better be fair, and you better. Be, for example, okay, I watched on one of the news stations. They had some kind of FBI consultant. Weigh in on Cheryl Jones relative to her being a principal at Twin Awful School and all this stuff. And FBI. I'm sitting there thinking I'm sitting there thinking to myself, that Jack Wagon doesn't know beans, beans about the facts of the case. And it's kinda like, oh You were mad because it wasn't you that they were interviewing. No, I wouldn't care if I was <laughs> interviewed. I'm not gonna do any interviews for twenty two more days. But I can tell you right now, T C when I'm unleashed, I'm gonna be unleashed. I, 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 but Are we t- going to talk about this case every day? No. Okay. No. No. Um, <laughs> but, but 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 what I'm trying to say, and by the way, my comments aren't about this case. My comments are about the media in general. Okay. I mean, I just I, I just think the media should be more responsible. Now, let me give you an example. Myself, okay. The Ryan Widmer case. Uh-huh. All right, and I commented on that the whole time. Now, this involved a murder. 
Right. And he was convicted. And I had strong opinions about it. Four times, I about think, his wasn't he? About his guilt and everything else. Well, you know what? There was nothing that I said that was slanderous, libelous, or untrue. Okay. Anyway, the media needs to be more responsible, TC. All right. That's my point. <laughs> we come back, we'll cover the economy and politics on Real Talk 1160. Remember, if you're away from the radio, you can use the Radio Loyalty app free on your iPhone, BlackBerry, or Android and listen to Real Talk 1160 24 hours a day. That's Radio Loyalty, all one word. It's the official app of Bulldog, Laura Ingram, Dennis Miller, and Real Sports with the Wild Man. And now, back to the Bulldog. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. I think TC is a little sensitive because he's our news guy around here. Well, see, because I try to be uh, accurate with the news. You are accurate with your news, TC. You do a wonderful job on our morning news around here. One thing I do tell the students, it's a phrase I heard a long time ago, and you know how news people always want to get the story first, want to get the big news. It's good to get it first, but first get it right. Very well said. Now, a lot of people have dropped the ball in that area. I understand that. Very well said, because it makes a difference. Yeah. You know, let me give you an example. I like Trisha Mackey. She did a great piece on me, a great profile yeah. piece on me. We're friends, okay? Did you, what, you guys milk cows? No, you bailed hay. Cleaned out horse stalls. Yeah. In her opening, in her opening line of the segment, she said I had been suspended when I hadn't been. And I said, Tricia, I have been suspended. Oh, really? Well, we'll change that. I'm thinking, my God, I appreciate the story, but come on. And, no. see, and, and by the way, there's somebody that she's friendly. She wasn't doing yeah. it maliciously. She just... Well, now, did she write that herself, or did somebody else do Some, the research? Somebody, maybe? somebody else did you know, it. That could have been an intern, got the story wrong. Somebody else did it. Yeah, that's how these things happen. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, you have heard me rail over and over again against the women who elected Barack Obama <laughs> and how I scratch my head and say, ladies, are you kidding me? Think about your man that is unemployed. Think about your man who's working those long hours. Think about your man that is suffering through the economy right now. And you're still going to vote for Barack Obama? Get this, TC. Men. Barack, 47%. Now, men, I want to know which men out there that uh, are jack wagons. I mean... 47% 47% of men like Barack Obama? Men, are you kidding me? 48% Romney. I mean, that's incredible to me. Is Barack a man's man or a woman's man? No. He's like a big old sissy socialist. Now, by the way, we know Romney's a sissy too, but <laughs> less of a sissy maybe. All right. Women, get this, TC. 54% of the ladies are for Barack only 36% for Romney. Really? Can you say gender gap? Really? 54 to 36. <sighs> ladies, I'm begging of you. All ladies of Bulldog Nation, we got to educate the other women in the world. Uh, Wisconsin votes on Tuesday. Romney is now in the lead. Romney's closed the gap in Pennsylvania, too. You know, Rick Santorum, go away. You know, he's just a needlemire now. I'm going to give him a <laughs> needlemire award. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah, needlemire. Now, we closed out before we went to the commercial break about how bad is it. How bad is it? And, and I want to preface this that uh, the two best news shows on television are the CBS morning news show on Sunday morning and 60 Minutes. I'm telling you, I go with that. They still got it, folks. I mean, you can say what you want about CBS. The Sunday morning show and the 60 minute show are outstanding show. I watch them every week. Last night, this was incredible. And and by the way, those of you that think that um, uh, they're sold out for Barack Obama, this story wasn't. Get this, TC. They did a story about NASA uh-huh. and how you know now we have to buy a flight with. Um, the Russians, a, if we want to go. Ride, yeah. And even if we reverse the decision now, no astronauts are going to be in space for five years. Well, the, sh- the shutting down of the Kennedy Space Center cost 7,000 direct jobs. 7,000. Now, 
it led to 7,000 more jobs in Brevard County, Florida, where the Kennedy Space Center is. 14,000 direct loss jobs as a result of that. They have this video of your president and my president, Barack Obama, on a video promising his decision to basically shut down the Kennedy Space Center that none of these people would lose their jobs. <laughs> I, I, and, then, and these people these people are being interviewed are like, are you kidding me? And then these are people. They worked there 25 years, 30 years, yeah. 10 years. No health insurance, no nothing. I mean, they would have never have thought. And I'm sitting there thinking, and then they talk about, they get emotional about what it was like to work on the space shuttle and the American pride and the national pride. And our president just took all of that, you know, that you know, sense of accomplishment. You know, we're the best in space and all of that. And he just, boom. And you know what cracks me up? It's to say $3 billion a year. $3 billion. You think about the money that is thrown around by this administration, this government, left and right. And they just, I mean, how do we, how do we shut down our space program? What's going to happen, TC, when that asteroid's coming to us and Bruce Willis can't get on a space shuttle and save the country? You got a point what, now. What's going to happen when Bruce know. Willis doesn't have a space shuttle to get on? I don't know. But now, you know, when he said, I'm going to shut down the space center, didn't somebody think, how's he going to save all those jobs? <laughs> I mean, really. You would I mean, hope. I mean, honestly, didn't you think, well, someone's got to lose a job? Exactly. You're going to shut down the whole thing? And that was... And CBS uh, Morning News credit, they actually showed the video clip of Obama saying that. And these guys are sitting there saying, uh, yep, that's what he said. And people and, and, believe that. I mean, how, how can he say it, though? You know, in the idea, the idea that he can say things and act like, you know, he's not like these. And he bastard the Democrats and the Republicans for their talk, you know. This president, he can lie. He can, he's one of those guys that can look you square in the eye and lie to you just like falling off a cliff or a wagon or whatever else you want. It's incredible. I mean, how do you, how do you say that to 7,000 people when you know it's not true? I mean, how, <laughs> incredible. Prankster, you want to weigh in on this? Well, actually, Bulldog, I wanted to see a good cage fight. So uh, I, I talked to Dan Carroll. Okay. And I told him that I would pay for him some lessons to take karate. And I'm trying to edge him on, so I don't know what's going to happen. I have not heard an acceptance of my challenge, prankster. But I was thinking maybe another news guy and maybe Willie, and you could have a four-way cage match. Well, the only way prankster would be Willie's on my team because I would not raise a hand. Well, that was off topic, prankster. We like to stay on topic, buddy. Yeah, yeah. come back to the mainland. Come back. <laughs> uh, credit downgrade. According to the New York Times, Bank of America, Citigroup, and Morgan Stanley face a possible downgrade in May from Moody's. Isn't that special? Uh, Blackberry's crashing. They're looking for a parachute, a savior. Maybe Green Water, using the taxpayer money that we recovered, should buy Blackberry, and we'll call we it go. Greenberry. <laughs> I just thought of that off the top of my head. That's not a bad idea. Uh, taxes. Two weeks till Judgment Day, and we all feel the pain. TC, are you finished with your taxes? <laughs> Why are you talking to me? Are I mean, I, me? I, I'm just telling you, my accountant's doing mine, and I have I don't know what the pain's going to be or what the pain will be, but all I know is there's always pain. You know, I always got to pay money that I don't have. Every year I say, I'm going to do my taxes. First thing, and as soon as I get that statement, I'm going to do my every, every year I'm going to. And I never do. I'll I'll be doing it. I'll be the guy in line the night before. We we haven't we're extended this year. We don't, it's not due till the seventeenth, right? Right. Yeah. They 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 run it up the day the day after the day with with holidays and weekends yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. But I mean, I'm telling you right now, it's always painful. And, and I'm see, I'm the I'm the example of the small business people doing the subchapter S elections and whatnot. Ah. That the that he wants to tax the hell out of it. He wants my tax rate to be. 48% instead of 35%. But he can't have double taxation on you because of that subchapter. Yeah, but he's just going to crank it up. And see, he thinks that I can just afford to pay more and pay more. Well, guess what, Mr. President? <laughs> I never have the money to pay what I owe. 
It's got to go find it somewhere. TC, can I borrow some? I got some friends that just won the Powerball. We come back. More Radio Superbity on Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieters, the Bulldog, on Real Talk 1160. Ladies and gentlemen of the American Jerry, I have a saying that there is a reality. There is a truth. You hear all these people discuss, oh, there's two sides of every story. You hear people talk about this or that. Well, guess what, folks? There is a true reality. There is a truth. There is. That, that's, you know, relative to political situation, legal situations. There is a truth. There, what do you mean by that? You've got some splitting to do, Lucy. No, what I mean by that is, is that people always say, well, there's this side of the story, that side of the story. Well, yeah, that's true, but there's also the truth, and there's a reality. I mean, for example, you can say all you want about uh, this or that, and the other thing is, there is a truth that Barack Obama, for example, uh, has no credible uh, plan or credible uh, or credibility at all relative to the country's budget deficit and our national debt. He just wants to just keep letting it go. Let's letting it go. That is a reality. That is a truth. Um, it is a reality, and it's a truth that Mitt Romney had in San Diego a somebody worried about a car elevator. <laughs> that is a reality. That is a truth. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it's important that we find out what those are and we act upon what the truth and what the reality is. You know, it looks like... In legal matters, it's all the time. There is a reality. You have the media report stuff. You've got this going on. Well, there's a reality. There is a truth. Okay, what really went on? Right. Now... Of course, we'll never know. Now, I, I mention this all the time. I get bombarded. By the way, keep sending me your jokes. I'll use them. Keep sending me whatever material you'll think that I should use on the radio. A lot of times, I don't use it. Don't be offended. I appreciate the thought. You have to understand that I cannot come off corny. I can't come off phony. I have to make sure that everything I report on the show is accurate. I don't want to use something that doesn't check out. That's right. But jokes, send them. But, but whatever you want to send. Now, I I got this uh, from a Bulldog Nation member, and I thought to myself, this is good enough for the radio. And it's about cowboy rules. Cowboy rules, TC. As a Dallas Cowboy? No, isn't a cowboy. Kind of like John Wayne. Okay. And uh, you know what? This is worth sharing with the ladies and gentlemen of the American jury. All right. Number one, pull your pants up. You look like an idiot. Can we have an amen there? Amen. Uh, Turn your cap right. Your head isn't crooked. Amen. (laughs) I mean, I love this. Let's get this straight. It's called a gravel road. I drive a pickup truck because I want to. No matter how slow you drive, you're going to get dust on your Mercedes. Drive it or get it out of the way. I like that one. They are cattle. That's why they smell like cattle. They smell like money to us. Get over it. By the way, you know Clint Eastwood starred in that old film, Rawhide? That old movie, Rawhide? Yeah. Clint Eastwood started it. So you have a $60,000 car, we're impressed. We have $250,000 combines that are driven only three weeks a year. (laughs) Every person, I love this one, every person in the Wild West waves. It's called being friendly. Try to understand the concept. A pet peeve of mine. I do. If that cell phone rings while a bunch of geese, peasants, ducks, doves are coming in during a hunt, we will shoot it out of your hand. (laughs) Yeah, we eat trout, salmon, deer, and elk. You really want sushi and caviar? It's at the bait shop. We open doors for women. That's applied to all women regardless of age. I like that. By the way, TC, that's something that I do do. I'm Good very man. conscious of it. I've been, Same here. I've been complained about it too many times. Uh, no, there's no vegetarian special on the menu. Order steak. Or you can order the chef's salad and pick off the two pounds of ham and turkey. <laughs> you bring Coke into my house, it better be brown, wet, and served over ice. All right. You bring Mary Jane into my house, she better be cute, know how to shoot, drive a truck, and have long hair. There you go. College and high school football is important as the Giants, Yankees, Mets, Lakers, and Knicks. Braves not in that list? Turn down the blasted car stereo. That humpity thump ain't music anyway. <laughs> 
The cowboy solution to saving gasoline. Obama wants to cut the amount of gasoline we use. The best way to stop using so much gasoline is to deport the 15 million illegal immigrants. That would be 15 million less people using our gas. <laughs> By the way, that's an impossible thing. You know, the one thing that I do agree with Romney and Newt, you can't, you can't deport all these people. It's, imp- it's impossible. Right. Uh, the price of gas would come down, bring our troops home from Afghanistan to guard the borders. I've been saying that forever. Uh, anyway, folks, some good stuff by the cowboy. You know, the simpler way of life, TC. Yeah. I'm telling Long you. cabins, outdoor plumbing. You know, I don't know. Speaking of cowboys, do you think the Indians, back when, when the, the pilgrims first came here, the Indians, all the different tribes got together and said, what are we going to do about these illegal aliens? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did, TC. These it Dutch. was called, it was called uh, scalpum. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was, called, sol- it, it was called scalpum. <laughs> it worked for a little while. That's a great insight, TC. See, that's, <laughs> that, is a, that is a great recognition of American history, that we were once the illegal aliens. We were, weren't we? Without green cards exactly or green water you know another another thing about our heritage that every time i'm a rebel i just embrace sam adams john hancock patrick henry everything about this country was begun by rebels yeah i mean people that didn't want to pay a tax people didn't want to follow the crown's rules right i mean it was all it was a rebellious old town you know, I know something interesting about one of our founding fathers, one of one of one of your favorite presidents, George Washington. Do you know his mom was a loyalist? Mm-hmm. She was upset with him. You do know, and I've told this story before, but I'll go ahead and share it now. Uh-huh. It is one of the most goosebumpy what ifs in American history that nobody knows except yours truly, because I read the most recent biography on George Washington, and I did not know it until I read the most recent biography. Uh, of George Washington. George Washington, when he was, I think it was like 17 years old, 16 or 17, his mother, whose last name was Ball, okay, signed him up, or excuse me, somebody, he wanted, excuse me, he wanted to join the Royal Navy, okay? Okay. He wanted, she had to sign the papers for him to join the Royal Navy, and she refused, Oh, okay. She did not want her George to go into the Royal Navy. TC, how, I mean, it's what, people talk about the butterfly effect, the what ifs. I'm sorry, folks. We don't have George Washington. We either A, are still part of England. B, maybe we had a revolution years later and still separated. Who knows? But our American history is far different if George Washington joined right. the Royal Navy. Now there's a Back to the Future episode for you. Michael J. Fox goes back to 17 or whatever, 17, maybe 1730. Right. When George Washington is a young man. Right. And he interferes and he goes off to the Navy. A Bulldog Nation member, Gwen, who's very liberal and a Democrat, but she's my friend. We exchange, you know, commentaries about politics and history and email. She's reading a book about Aaron Burr, yeah. and we exchanged, you know, comments. I've, re- I've read a biography of Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr was a brilliant man and was very close to being the president of the United States. And then, of course, his life took a complete different turn, and he was very intelligent, all these things. And I, and I was telling her, I said, all these terrible movies out there. And uh, Robert Redford started this American movie company. He's got more money than I do because this was my idea, but I don't have the money to do it. And he did the one about conspiracy, about a, you know the Surratt trial and the Lincoln conspiracy, which was, a, which, which was well done, great movie. I haven't seen any more, though, from him. Right. And I told her, I said, you know, I cannot believe no one has done a story, a movie, about Aaron Burr on the big screen. He's a fascinating character in history. Benedict Arnold, fascinating character in history. John Marshall, our first, uh, or the third Chief Justice of the United States, fascinating history. Patrick Henry. And we, instead, we got to go watch lousy movies instead of these great movies that are true. The drama in Aaron Burr's life from beginning to end. Do you know one of his uh, problems that he had with Alexander Hamilton, exactly. which was legitimate? Alexander Hamilton basically implied that he had an incestuous relationship with his daughter, Theodosia. Really? Yeah. Them's fighting words. I mean, you no know, uh, hello. Them's fighting <laughs> words. Time to shoot and kill. Right, right. 
Now, is Burr, there a book Burr about had legitimate Burr? grievances against Hamilton. Is there a book about Burr? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, see, maybe if somebody were to pick up that book, you know, because most movies are based on... It, was, it's, it came out a couple years ago. I read it. It's a great story. It, oh, here's, here's a great story because people love law. Aaron Burr was later acquitted of the murder of Alexander Hamilton... And when he sat in, in court, the, the presiding judge, now just think about it, he was the vice president at the time. Right. The presiding judge was Chief Justice Marshall, who hated Jefferson. Yeah. One of his lawyers was Caesar Rodney, who helped pass the Declaration of Independence. You could do a movie about the Burr trial. <laughs> yeah. The drama. The trial of the century. But no, we got to watch century. goofy movies every weekend. <laughs> We come back. More radio superbities. We wrap up on Real Talk 1160. And this afternoon, make sure you join Real Sports with Wildman Rick the Brick. Cast of characters, Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. This afternoon from 5 to 7 on Real Talk 1160. And now back to the Bulldog. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. People Magazine reported about the uh, James Cameron and his descent into the deepest depths of the ocean. And they also reported about how Titanic, the anniversary of the sinking, is going to be redone in 3D, re-released. Like, you know what, folks? I don't like watching that movie. It's like, you know what's going to happen. You know it's going to sink. It's like, what's the point? But anyway, People Magazine uh, had a little special on it, and they also had a little reunion of the descendants of those people that survived or descendants of those that died on the ship. And the stories that they shared in here are remarkable. Remarkable. Um, Isidore and Ida Strauss may be the best. This from People Magazine. Recognizing the elderly Macy's co-owner... Macy's the store. Officers were willing to let him on a lifeboat. But Isidore wouldn't go. Upon hearing this, Ida returned to the ship. She was in a lifeboat saying, we will die as we have lived. And they wrapped their arms around each other on the main deck. According to a survivor who saw them from the lifeboat. Then an enormous wave threw them into the sea. (laughs) Is that not amazing? (laughs) Good golly. She was already in a lifeboat. He was offered a lifeboat. He was beyond noble. Here's one. William Carter, great-grandfather of Michael Carter. Michael, a Washington, D.C. business consultant, learned of his family's link only when Titanic director James Cameron assistant called about a car. W.E. Carter had brought aboard a Renault. Cameron said a love scene in the car. Though in reality, it was crated. How cool was that to be a descendant of him watching the movie? saying, hey, man, that's my car. Dad's car. Great-grandpa's car. The family including an 11-year-old son who, by wearing a woman's hat, got in a nearly full boat, all survived. You know what? I have to say this, folks. For all the men on the Titanic that went down with the ship, I admire you. For all the men that got on lifeboats, I can't blame you. (laughs) You know, you know what I'm saying, TC. Right, right. I, you know, the will to survive is strong. It's true. That's I'm true. not. I mean, how do you, how do you like, uh, you know, curse somebody? Now, this is funny. A couple of these people in in these reports that some of them were chastised because they didn't die. It's almost kind of like um, they were punished for not dying. It's kind of like, well, shame on you, you did not die. It's like, holy cow, it's pretty. Kind Terrible. Like, kind of like OJ. Shame on you. You went free. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. In legal news, I just have two things. Uh, the Indiana Bar Association has cautioned attorneys about coupon sites. Using group coupon or daily deal marketing is fraught with peril and is likely not permitted under the Indiana Rules of Professional Conduct. Now, 
TC, really? I can't imagine. I, by the way, you know, lawyers want to do it. You know, I'm not going to judge them. But a lawyer sends out this coupon and gives you a will for $25, normal value $100. This coupon gives you a full DUI defense. I mean, it's kind of funny. Yeah, it is. So lawyers want to get in on it too, huh? Couponing. Come on, lawyers. What do you think? We're no? not going to start couponing, are we? No. I say no. The bulldog will not coupon. That's incredible. Now, this this is a this is a uh, terrible breach. And I'm I'm personally aware of a situation in Northern Kentucky where a priest counseled a married couple and hooked up with a woman. I've known pastors who so counseled counseled and hooked up with what, the, um, what kind of counseling was that? I mean, God is leading you towards me. That's what this domestic strife is all about. Wow. Anyway, now there's a made for TV movie for you. A lawsuit has been filed against the pastor of one of the largest churches in Nashville claiming the pastor slept with the wife of one of the church members. According to the suit, the couple engaged in pastoral counseling with Bishop Joseph Walker III in 2000. Never trust a guy with a third on the end of his name (laughs) in counseling. And shortly thereafter, Walker began having an affair with the plaintiff's wife. The affair, which allegedly lasted four years, led to the couple's divorce. She apparently was doing too much work down at the church, huh? Too much volunteer work. A similar lawsuit has been filed against Walker alleging sexual misconduct with another church member. Man, if you're the preacher, you got to leave the flock ladies alone. (laughs) Don't you? Exactly. I mean, come on. Last night, this is great. Sunday night television is awesome. When I work in my living room, I this is my routine. I now watch Mad Men at 9, uh-huh. or excuse me, Shameless at 9, Mad Men at 10, Games of Thrones at 11, uh, then House of Lies, Californication. Then I even got to watch Spartacus, which I missed Friday night over again, which was the season finale. And the show House of Lies, which stars Kristen Bell and uh, Don Cheadle. Cheadle? Cheadle. Cheadle. Cheadle, okay. They play these consultants, and they're always conniving and, and whatnot. And they're trying to kill a merger. Yeah. And Cheadle's wife, ex-wife, is a competitor consultant, but they traded information to help each other. And she told him that the guy, the enemy, that was taking care of this merger that was basically going to cheat Cheadle and his company out had had serial sexual harassment problems. Mm-hmm. All right? Well... Kristen Bell, her character, was actually also someone that slept with this guy to try to find out some information, okay? And they needed to to kill the merger, okay? She gets drunk, and at the announcement where the guy had already said how great this merger is going to be, she goes to the microphone. She confesses her relationship to the owner and asks, come on, ladies, I know there's more of you out there. And about 20 women stand up. Wow. The merger was killed. I suppose. (laughs) Oh, my (laughs) God. It was vicious. Man. But that's an abuse of your authority. When did this guy have time to get anything done? I don't know, man, but geez, oh, Pete. Man, he was making mergers. He wasn't a preacher either. He was just a businessman. (laughs) (laughs) Closing the deal. I mean, there were 20 of them. Just closing the deal. How does a CEO... Have 20 relationships with his workers. Just closing the deal. I mean, you can understand one, maybe two, three, I guess, but 20? But it killed the merger. (laughs) All right, TC, can we have a little bit of blue sky? All right. UK is going to win tonight, folks. They're going to beat Kansas by at least 10. The only thing that can wreck the UK's chances are the referees. And the the referees might like Bill Self better than John Calipari. Didn't it drive you nuts listening to Clark Kellogg and Jim Nance talk about Patino, 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 Louisville, Louisville, Louisville? It drove me nuts. This was our feel-good song of the day that we played earlier, folks. This is called Electric Like Orchestra, Mr. Blue Sky. Again, all my best to you Buckeye Nation fans. Valiant effort. Good year. Cardinal fans. Jeez, old Pete, with no stars, make it to the Final Four. The Wildcats will eat Jayhawks tonight, led by Davis.
for the UK Blue Wildcat Nation. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. I'll be back tomorrow with Radio Superbity. It's off to practice law. Real Talk, 1160.